And there's the recording started. Just a couple more minutes. And Becky, you'll be uh, opening the session, right? I'm sure I can. Um, I can introduce you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One minute and counting. Well, it looks like 2 o'clock, so unless my watch is fast. Hello, I'm Becky Rares, and I'm your session moderator, and welcome to the 2 to 2.45 p.m. faculty uh, Sakai course showcase. And your um, presenter is Shannon Han, and she will be introduced by Sawa Khan, the 2014 committee chair for the Teaching with Sakai Innovation Award, TWSIA. Hello and welcome. I'm Sawa Khan. Uh, as Becky said, Chair of the Teaching with Sakai Innovation Award Committee for 2015. Uh, I'm at Texas State University where we've been using Sakai for the past seven years uh, and I'm pleased to be with you today. Before I introduce our speaker, Shannon Hahn, I'd like to mention that she is a 2014 winner of the Teaching with Sakai Innovation Award for her online Spanish course. The Teaching with Sakai Innovation Award, which we fondly call TWISIA, began seven years ago as an initiative of the Teaching and Learning Group. We get entries from all over the world where people are using the Sakai CLE or Aperio OAE. The committee is made up of individuals in the Sakai community. We're all volunteers and we're responsible for preparing the website to receive entries, work out the entry forms and the process, and then later to review the entries and make uh, selections for the winners. Uh, our committee usually has an international flavor. This year we have members from South Africa, Argentina, uh, the UK, and the US. The intent of the award is to recognize excellence in teaching and learning, and we currently have five categories for entries, which are traditional higher ed, and that includes web-enhanced courses, higher ed fully online or hybrid courses, primary and secondary education, that's K through 12, uh, projects and other uses, and portfolios. If you'd like more information about the award, you can find that at the Sakai project site, the aperio.org. Uh, 
org site. And we also maintain a Confluence page where you will find details of what we do, including links to all of our uh, meeting notes. There's also a list of the committee. Uh, and, on, and actually, I invite you to join the committee if you have any interest in this. Um, and also, I'm hoping that once our announcement comes out about the opening of the competition for 2015, that you will promote it heavily at your schools. All right. Shannon Hahn is, as I said earlier, a 2014 Twizia winner. She's chair of foreign languages and a Spanish instructor at Durham Technical Community College in Durham, North Carolina, where she's been on the faculty since 2005. Her teaching experience includes Spanish from beginning to advanced levels, as well as college success courses, and she enjoys integrating technology to enhance the learning environment for her students. She's been using Sakai since 2012, after nine years of using that other system, I think it's called Blackboard. Uh, she's presented at local, state, and national conferences on language pedagogy and K-16 through articulation efforts for world language programs. She's a previous chair of the statewide organization Foreign Language Instructors in Community Colleges and maintains the group's website. And now, here she is, Shannon Hahn. And Shannon, can I, I, I've, I have to add two more okay. things as a moderator. Um, please note, everyone, that you're muted, but please ask questions in the GoToWebinar questions box, and we'll address them after Shannon's done speaking. This session's being recorded. It'll be available later on the Aperio YouTube channel. And please, if you have any problems with video or audio, enter your comments in the question box, and I'll help you as soon as possible. Thank you. Please welcome Shannon Hahn. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and thank you, everyone, for coming to listen to me. Um, I don't get to see your faces, but I can um, talk to you this way. So my um, presentation is called Give Sakai a Workout. And you'll see as we go through this what I mean by that. Um, basically used Sakai in any way I possibly could um, in my course. <coughs> Excuse me. I woke up with a little bit of a cough this morning, so bear with me if I have trouble. So the course that we're talking about is a Spanish 231. It's um, a reading and composition course. And so as its name says, basically students are working on their reading comprehension skills, their writing skills, and that includes grammar and style. And the course is our basically our fifth semester course of Spanish. So students coming into it have had officially have had four semesters of Spanish. Um, there's actually a wide variety of students that end up taking the course, but that's, that's the official prerequisite is the fourth semester grammar course. Then it's also a course that fits into our certificate in translation program, which actually attracts a high number of native Spanish speakers and heritage speakers. So we end up with a good mix of students in the class. Um, and I chose to put the course online. This, the first time it was done online was last spring, so this has been fairly new for me. Um, we put the course online basically for enrollment reasons. Um, the course is, uh, is required in that certificate program in translation, but the, um, we only offer it once a year. So we wanted to be as accommodating as possible to students with their schedules, and we figured online would be a good place to try you know, to see if that would work. But obviously, there are challenges to making it an online course. And the first thing that first thing I really had to think about was content. It is a reading and writing course, which is something you could very easily just do on your own, behind closed doors, and never speak to anyone about. Um, but that's not what I wanted it to be. I wanted to have discussion. I wanted the students engaged with each other, and not just in their own, own you know, private area trying to do all their work. So I wanted, I had to really think of how I could make the content and how could I, how could I make this course work where they were felt more like they were part of a community where they could share and contribute to the course and not just, just you know, do their own thing on the side. 
The second part I've kind of already alluded to is the language skills of my students. I have students who have only had four semesters of Spanish, that's two years, um, sitting beside, you know, virtually beside someone who's been speaking Spanish all their lives. And so the language skills are varied. Um, you know, this is a course that they have to write, and so there's a lot of um, just needing to, to meet students on their level. Um, I had to be very aware of the fact that the official prerequisite for the course is four semesters of Spanish. Um, and so knowing what those students can do, I had the challenge of how do I design assignments and design the course in a way that it's, it's equitable for everyone, that, that the kind of things I can do to level the playing field. I want you know, students who don't have as much grammar yet, but they're officially, you know, they've done what they should to be in the course, I want them to, to be, have just as much chance of success as someone whose grammar is really good. Um, and I'll show you how, the, how I work towards um, equaling that out. And the last part is the technology. I had, um, because the course is only done once a year, and this was online, they had really no choice. Um, the students were obligated to take a course online even if they didn't feel comfortable doing that. And some of my students weren't, um, but we worked through that. Um, but the technology levels, I had students who who were very uncomfortable and you know, they came to me at the beginning and said, I don't know how to do this online. And then I had students literally who worked at IBM and they that's their job. They, they work on computers. So I had a a mix of experience levels there. So given all of this, I really wanted to find ways to build a community so students would feel like they could contribute and that their voice was valued, and then at the same time do things that would target what skills those students really needed to learn. So if I have a native speaker whose grammar is great, I had students who had master's degrees in their country, so they may have very good Spanish, but they Wanted, needed to work more on their comprehension, reading comprehension skills or how to organize an essay well, things like that. And so I looked for ways to, to build assignments that they would target what they needed. Let's see, I'm trying to get this to move. There it goes. Okay, so the goals that I have in the design are to create community and then support individual success. And when I came into you know, I was looking into making this an online course. I spoke with lots of people, got um, feedback from our English faculty because they do teach composition courses online. I went to conferences and, and you know, did lots of research on trying to build a strong course. And the three things that really stuck out to me, and the first was to plan it as an online course. I don't think it's sufficient to just take your in-person class and just translate it online. It doesn't necessarily work. I think it's best to say, I'm going to do this online, look at what do I really want my students to do, and then figure out how that best works online. Um, the activities I would do in the classroom are not necessarily ones I would do online. So I looked at it as a oh, complete redesign. I wanted to create an online course. <clears throat> The second was to be prepared for the learning curve, and I mean this really for students and for the instructor. Um, they're, you know, especially with varying technology skills, my students, you know, some students had a, a steep learning curve of how, you know, they didn't, signing into a website was hard for them, so <clears throat> I created tutorials, I worked, um, I tried to slow the pace of the beginning of the course, so the first couple weeks we did things kind of at half time. So the first assignment was very low stakes, um, and I had half of them do, half of them submit the first week and half submit the second week. So I kind of spread out the, the pain of all the tech, tech problem emails. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then the last one was to have a personal presence. And this is extremely important to me, especially if I want to create a community in my course. I need to be there just as much as my students do. So I did, um, I was very often commented on their, their posts. We use blog posts and, and various things. So there, I've commented, they saw my name there. 
I included videos of myself telling them the instructions or talking about the course. I, um, and we had, actually, at the beginning, we did meet in person those who could so that we have that personal connection. And so taking all this, this is kind of all my thought processing going into how I wanted this course to work. I created basically my lesson structure. And I decided first, what did I really, how did I want my students to, to do their, what do I want them to do in this course? And then I looked for the Sakai tool that would allow me to do that. And so what you're seeing on the left is what I wanted them to do. So I used lessons tool to make a weekly lesson as the base, and I'm going to show you those in just a minute. Um, so they had a weekly lesson that was more or less a bullet point kind of lesson telling them, you know, you need to go here and do this, and then, you know, explaining this, and it, it walked them through what they needed to do that week. I wanted them to be writing constantly, um, in informal writing. I wanted journaling. I wanted lots of producing language, whether it was it, and it wasn't about being grammatically perfect or anything like that. It was just I wanted them practicing. And so for that, we used the blog. Um, obviously, they would do some formal writing. This was a composition class. And so those, they, they did their assignments. And then on the reading side, the reading actually had kind of two components to it. Um, reading comprehension, they, first of all, I wanted to know that they as individuals actually understood it. So they did have something through tests and quizzes and um, some reading comprehension kind of questions for each text that we read. <clears throat> and then they also did group work in their reading comprehension, and that was done on Wikispaces. That's the only thing that I could not do in Sakai at the time, so um, I did have to go outside of Sakai for that to do group wikis. Um, and then there, where I really built in their um, tried to level that playing field of, of what each student was working on was in the personal goal portfolio. And what that did was um, students had to choose a personal goal for the semester related to the course. Um, so the student who has not had, has really only come through those four semesters of Spanish, most of their goals are, were grammar goals. So they would say, I need to work on my use of the past tenses. Um, whereas the native speaker may say, I've, I really want to work on reading more critically. I want to you know, read on a deeper level. And so they chose their own goal, and then throughout the semester, I, they had guided questions and things to do to work through setting the goal, um, saying what they were going to do to work towards it, and then in the end, they reflected on what kind of progress they made. So it wasn't about whether, you know, there was no comparison of your goal was more lofty than this one or anything like that. It was just, did you make your own progress in this course? And then finally, the other participation was part of, part of the grading system in the course. And we did use the forums and the chat and the wiki. And students were very participatory in the course. Um, and it was interesting. It was the first time I had used the chat. And the chat tool became the main source of communication in the course. And the students loved using the chat more so than the forums. And I think because they can just shout out their message. They don't have to think about what category it goes into. A forum, you have to, there's some foresight that has to go into that. And with a chat, they just asked a question. And honestly, most of the time, another student answered them before I got to it. I would check it constantly. but. The students would answer each other. They would help each other. Um, and that's exactly what I wanted them to be doing in the course. And then for all of these, or any of them that have a comment capability in Sakai, I did activate it. Um, so the students, for example, on the blogs, they commented on each other's blogs. They commented on each other's um, portfolios if they wanted to. So there was a lot of discussion and helping each other and saying, oh yeah, I think that too, or I, I have that same kind of problem, and this is what I do. So there was a lot of um, camaraderie built during the semester through just even having those comment capabilities activated. <clears throat> um, so we are going to go out and look at the course. I first wanted to um, mention kind of what I 
one thing that I think is important before students ever even get to those assignments are those first days of the course. How do you, what tone do you set and how do you um, present the course to the students? And this, this is really where I think the community gets built is that very, very beginning. Um, at our college, we, we have orientation sessions for our online courses. They can either be in person or online. And I actually did one of each. I did an in-person one and an online one after that. And caught almost all the students that way. And roughly half of them came to the in-person orientation. So we had that personal connection, you know, even though that's the last time we may have seen each other. Some students did come to my office afterwards, but um, a lot of students I didn't see again. Um, at the beginning, I also did this survey of skills and preferences where I literally asked them, you know, what's the best phone number to contact you if I needed to? What kind of background do you have with the language? You know, when do you think you might be studying? Just to kind of get some general information that I could then use um, in various ways during the semester. I created tutorials for the tools that we were using. Um, and then as they all did a per, they all did their first blog for everyone was just to introduce themselves. And I answered every one of those to, to let them know that, yes, I did read it, and I want to know who you are. <clears throat> and then the last thing that really sets the tone is the home page features. And if we can just scooch out to the course itself, um, you're seeing the course. <clears throat> and this is the, the picture that I chose, I really wanted to have a visual representation of our, our online space. Um, and I wanted them to feel like this was a place they come together to share and not just a place where they sit and read it, you know, sit behind a computer. On the home page, I also, if I can scroll down, have, and sorry that the site is all in Spanish, but you can, I'm trying to, we'll try to direct you to the, to the, areas. Um, but all of this that you're seeing are basically my explanation of what's on those different menu items. So with, if they're lost, if they're trying to figure out, okay, where does she keep such and such, or what is it I'm supposed to do first, then I try to put them, give them a map on that home page, and that stays there all semester. Um, during the during the semester, each of the weeks has a weekly lesson. Oh, sorry. There's a weekly lesson each each week, and I've literally just listed them: week one, week two, week three. And these this is just one example of them. These are built in the lessons tool. Um, I understand that some people are just getting that, but um, we do have that, so it's built in Lesson Builder. <clears throat> this particular week, I had a video of myself introducing the week. I found that um, they understood my instructions better if I just stuck a video up and told them instead of expecting them to read. And then you'll see that it just kind of numbers through, these are the things that you need to do this week. Um, and then they did have a blog to do at the end of that week. So each week, that's really where they were supposed to start is Go to the weekly lesson, and it'll tell you what you need to do. <clears throat> the blogs, they did a number of blogs, I think about seven or eight during the semester. And they varied. They were um, really just prompts to try to get them writing. I wanted them to write during the semester. And so a lot of the blogs were, were personal. They were in this particular one you're seeing, she's reflecting on the reading strategies that we were discussing. And you'll see that the students do comment to each other. Um, they, you know, she basically says that she, she liked the idea of, re of reading with a pencil in your hand and being ready to make notes and, and how to make notes while you're reading. And so a lot of the other students commented back to her about, about how they felt that was useful too, and this is how they've done it in the past and things. So there's a lot of sharing throughout the semester. This is not uncommon um, that they would share with each other. The other part, I want to show you the portfolio a little better. 
Um, the portfolio is really, like I said, where they got to say, this is my purpose for this course and this is how I'm going to get better in some way. Um, so we did use the blog at the beginning of the semester to determine each person's goal. So they proposed a goal for themselves and then they and then the student and I would have an interaction, you know, we went back and forth on comments to try to really pinpoint, you know, some students came out with a great goal to start with and some of them just said, I want to read better. And so we had to really tease that out and decide, you know, come to something that's doable in a three month time span. Um, but the portfolio assignment, basically, for the beginning, they just had to list what's their goal, what steps they were going to do to to work towards it, and then give an example or an anecdote that basically illustrates why did they choose this goal. And then at the end of the semester, they were they had to tell me what resources they used to do that goal or to, to work on it. Um, give me another example that shows some kind of progress, whether it's you know a concrete example or an anecdote, either way. And then they had to reflect on that progress during the semester. Did they make the progress they wanted? If they did, and what what more could they do, and and things like that. So really, just wanted them to think about their learning experience and not just focus on okay, I got X, Y, and Z right. I wanted them to think about how did I learn this and how could I do this better in the future. Um, and I, did, I do have permission from the student to show you her work. That um, This is one student, and I love using her, blog, her portfolio. She did a great job with it. But she's also a student who came to me at the beginning of the semester and said, I'm really nervous about taking an online course. She wasn't comfortable with the technology. Um, and she, but this is at the end of the course, she not only was, she didn't just put her text on here, she, she used features of the student pages that are a little more advanced. And I was just really impressed. Um, she, on this first page, she's just kind of copied what the assignment was. Um, and you'll see that we, we had some exchange throughout the semester. So anyone who actually started the assignment when I asked them to early on, I gave them feedback. So there's no reason they shouldn't have gotten a good grade on this at the end, because I told them you know, exactly what where they should work on and you know which parts were already good. So, but she chose to do hers in two parts. So she took part A and gave her answers. Um, and then I think last time I tried to hit back, this didn't work. Yeah, it did. Um, her part A and part B kind of mess things up. But um, I'm not going to try to go through because then I'll end up showing you everyone's grades, and I don't want to do that. Um, but basically put, she really improved her technology skills. And that was a common um, feedback that I got at the end of the semester, that they not only were, they felt like they really got a deeper understanding of, of reading strategies, writing strategies in Spanish, but they also felt like they um, improved their technology skills. The students, um, in general, Overwhelmingly positive feedback. They appreciated the level of feedback they received during the semester, um, the depth of the course. They felt like they learned a lot. Um, and what's interesting, especially with the reading of the text, I have the courses was mostly native Spanish speakers um, from a variety of countries, and we were working with um, Hispanic authors in the text that we were reading, and. They were, they were very excited to read Hispanic authors because they did, hadn't really had that experience. And they, they had not heard of the people that we were reading, and they really enjoyed the depth of the course. But what was interesting, I didn't even really think about it until the course was over, that I actually never created a lesson on any of those authors. The students did that. Um, and that was, unfortunately, then through Wikispace, it's not through Sakai, um, their group reading comprehension projects that they did. In their group, each student had a different aspect of the text that they were supposed to present to everyone else. And they created a site that had all that information. And really, the students, they taught each other everything. Um, I went in and made sure that they had covered what I would, the, the bare minimum that I would expect them to have. Um, 
but they really went deeper than I personally ever would have in creating a lesson. And so when we did Jose Marti, for example, they, they found so much more to teach each other than I could have done on my own. Um, and they, and in the feedback, they, they appreciated the skills they learned. Um, the negatives that I did get, they said there were too many places to go. We were all in Sakai with the exception of Wikispaces, but they just let me know that there's some, there's some work to be done on the organization of the course um, to try to not direct them a little better. Um, and then we all kind of missed the face-to-face -face interaction. We would, they would discuss the readings in the groups, but we never really had a good time for everybody to discuss it together. Um, and that was kind of missing. So what my lessons for, oh, sorry. I forgot to translate this one back to English. <laughs> my lessons for the future is to make the organization more visual. Um, I think, you know, you saw my lesson. It was very wordy. It's very linear. You've got to read from the top to the bottom. Um, and I think that our students don't always react to that very well. I would like to try to incorporate virtual sessions or even in-person sessions or maybe some hybrid where you know, if people want to come, they can. If not, they can meet us online and periodically just to have some of those full group discussions that we weren't able to have. And then also to revise the, the rhythm of the course a bit. Um, I did find that we, I probably tried to do a little too much. I realized um, since this was my first fully online class, I, I underestimated the time it takes to necessarily get things done. When you really just have, I, I had built, built my course around a once a week deadline. The deadlines were Thursday nights at midnight. So, um, you know, if you want people to comment on each other's work, that builds, you know, it's a week before you get to really get to the next step. So, um, and I want to look at revising the rhythm just a bit, um, whether it's, you know, I could go with multiple deadlines or I could try to um, spread things out. I'm not quite sure exactly what I'm going to do yet, but um, those are just the lessons that, that I have in mind for the future. Um, in general, the class was a positive experience. I felt like the students learned a lot. They um, gave good feedback in, in, in the, both the positive and the negatives. I, 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 I appreciated that. Um, and I think that's actually my last slide. So if there are any questions, we do have some time. And um, between this and going back out to the course site. I do have one question so far. OK. Um, um, someone asked, did the menu items in Spanish cause confusion among the students? The menu items in Spanish? Um, not in this course because the, they are expected to be able to read this. Um, so I did by hand change all of those um, that you're seeing. It, those really weren't an issue. And if there was ever, con if anyone had any confusion about what was where, I, that's what the this homepage kind of map is all about for me. Um, so if they're not sure exactly where they're supposed to be. But the the reading level of the students was enough that they, they could handle they should have been able to handle the navigation of the course even even if they were just you know the ones who've had the four semesters. Okay, are there other questions? If there aren't other questions, or while anyone's thinking of their question, um, I would like to just mention the the award process. Um, I know Salwa mentioned. I don't believe they put out the actual call for anything yet, but um, watch for that early in the spring. The um, the award is 
is a great experience if you're interested, if you at all feel like you've done something. And I, I probably would not have applied had um, Becky and others in my college said, hey, Shannon, you really should do this. Um, so if you are someone who's, who's more an administrator level, reach out to folks that you think that have an interesting site to, to kind of push them to do it. Um, but it, it can be a little intimidating the title because you feel like you have to do something outrageously unique. But I, I would say that my site's not anything that others wouldn't be doing as well. I just feel like, you know, it did come together well. Um, but do take a look at the award if you're if you've been using Sakai if you've if you've done some things that you feel, if you feel like it's been a success it's worth applying. Oh, you did get um, another response. Mm -hmm. um, uh, someone said it's a really nice, nicely designed site, and I love how much effort you put into making it so carefully focused on a good experience for your students. Well, thank you. That was. My intention. I don't. I hope they felt that way all the time. But I'm sure there are moments. Um. Oh my! Here's another one. Um, let's see. Very interesting and great ideas for the design. Thank you so much for sharing. Might be you mentioned this and I missed it. Is there a place where students can go to have a general list or map of tasks? that they need to complete and forms places they need to go. I found that I had to actually list in my syllabus and paragraph what to do first. Um, I do put things, do, things do show on the calendar for them. It obviously won't right now because they didn't have anything due in November of 2014, but um, the, I did have things post on the, on the calendar on Sakai. So that was one thing. Um, the syllabus, I do have a, a syllabus tab, but it's really more general. At the time that I wrote it, um, I do say some of the big assignments, but not the, the details. Um, so I can't say that I created one separate list. Um, I just encourage them to go to that weekly lesson because that's really where the the bullets are. Um, that is the one thing that I'm trying to work on to organize it a little better. You know, students did still ask me, so you know, where am I supposed to turn this in at? And it's, you know, the link is just there. All you do is hit the link. But um, there's obviously some some ways I can organize it a little bit better or give them better instructions or guides to, to learn how to use the site. Okay, I've got a couple more questions. They're now they're starting to come. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, very nice design. I recall mentioning that you mentioned students' feedback about too many places to go. Did they mm -hmm. give any suggestions? I'm asking this because we tend to get that feedback sometimes as well. No, they didn't give suggestions. Unfortunately, students aren't real good at taking that in the second step. <laughs> um. Okay, I've got a few more questions. So, um, another person asked, how much time per week did you spend on the course? Oh, goodness. Um, because I was designing it while I was teaching it, and this was, you know, it was really a work in progress all semester, um, I felt like I could have spent my entire work week on it. Um, I didn't, but I could have. It wasn't so much the the creation or the design or the putting things online. For this was really my time more went into the grading because it was a composition class, um, and so there was a lot of a lot to read on my end. Um, so I. It took a lot of time. I think it will be a little easier this coming spring when I do it again. Um, I, I'm never good at just like copy, copying and pasting last semester stuff, so I know I'll be tweaking it like crazy, but um, at least the, the basics of what they're doing is already there. Okay, I have another. It's, okay, I'm trying to piece this together. Um, the same person who asked about um, did the students give you feedback 
about um, where what to do about too many places to go. And that person said maybe it has to do with um, digital literacy skills. Um, and so that was something that they mentioned. And then and the person who asked about, um, let's see, um, how about students who like to have a general list of what to go and where to go? She meant that she wasn't asking about assignments. She was more asking about um, places in your course. Did they know where to find information and where to find the links as she's had new students to online classes who seemed a bit lost on how to manage and navigate an online site? Yeah, I think those two are very related. Um, the, if a student truly goes to my week and they go through um, just pull up week one. You'll see, I've, it's funny because looking back on the course, I see this evolution of my my weekly lessons. Um, but if they were to use the weekly lesson page, they literally everything they need is right in front of them. Um, and I gave them written instructions like I can't. I maybe I can and just don't know how. But um, I would love to put a link to the blog right here so that they don't even have to click on the menu on the left. Um, but I did give them, for everything they needed to do, I gave them the, the technical instructions right there with telling them to do it. So like this was their first time in the blog, so I gave them the technical instructions. Choose blogs, click on add blog entry, so on and so forth. Um, and with every assignment, um, like even when I did, um, well, it's going to take me too much to try to click around and find it. but. Um, with every assignment, everything they had to do, I included those technical instructions right there. And so I think that helped. Um, at the same time, there, one student who did say, to give you some perspective, one student who told me there was too many places to go, the next sentence was um, something about submitting things through the chat room. So obviously they didn't understand the tools. I mean, that, that's, that's a digital, digital literacy question. Um, I would, I'm hoping in the future, when I said I want to make this more visual, I'd really like to make, I don't, I'd think about doing icons or something, something to, to connect them more visually to this is what you need to do for blog and this is what you need to do for reading comprehension or something so that they have not just a bunch of words on the screen telling them what to do because they don't read the words but I'm hoping that they'll see pictures. Um, well, that we'll same person, the same person that asked about the digital literacy, said yes, um, very nice. The lesson builder does give a good overview, and you can have direct links to blogs and resources. And she's she didn't mean to. Um, she's saying sorry. I'm just trying to share how we try to solve that problem. Oh no, no, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> We all know that. <laughs> that no, no. To get students on track no where to go. And now I have another um, person who, who shared, and they said, the same person who asked you about how much time it took, and they mm -hmm. asked how much time you spent in the course, said, um, it sounds fairly labor intensive, which is exactly what I've experienced. Administration doesn't seem to recognize that online courses are much more time consuming. And uh, boy, don't we know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now I do. <laughs> I knew about it anyway. People had told me, but now I really know. I was lucky that I had enough students that this was um, two courses in one, so it it cut down. You know, I was able to count this this one website. You know, it's one Sakai site for two courses of my teaching load, so that helped me just a little bit. But it still was forty papers to you know forty students to manage, but. Um, at least I didn't have to build, you know, the build was once, you know, and then I could, because I combined my course sections into one Sakai site, so I could just build once and then just deal with lots and lots of papers. Oh, and someone else pointed out, yep, they totally agree that it definitely, online courses are more time consuming to develop as well as teach, and when you have a good course site, then the textbook goes out of print. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Well, the good thing, is because um, this is kind of a, it's almost a niche course. There are not many courses that are just called a reading and writing, a reading and composition course in Spanish. So we did use a book, but I didn't use any of the book actually doesn't even have technology with it. It's just a book. Um, and so it really, I didn't rely on, like if I were doing this in our lower level language classes, you have, you know, Cengage's or Pearson's or whoever's online, you know, I Learn or My Spanish Lab and all those kinds of things. Um, I didn't rely on anything like that. So it's all built in Sakai. If I were to have a book change, I think I could deal. <laughs> you know, it's, it wouldn't be as catastrophic as, as changing in one of my other courses, but it is true. It can be hard to work with the textbooks in that way. And I think I've given you all of the questions, so we have a couple more minutes. So if you have one last question, please use your time. We're almost out of it. And if you do think of anything afterwards or want the um, presentation, I will have that on the, the conference, the virtual conference discussion forum, the way they have it set up. I put a previous version of the presentation on there in the forum. I'll, I'll put the newer version up there. Um, I'll probably leave the other one there anyway, but just have two versions. Um, and, but I will monitor that for the next few days. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask there as well. Because you have a Spanish version of it too, right? Yes. Okay. And someone just said thank you for the great presentation and ideas and good luck. Thank you very much. And we still got one minute. One minute. One minute. Oh, and someone else said, I'm glad we have this opportunity to share. Thanks again. Totally agree. This has been a wonderful conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been my first experience on, in a virtual conference. <laughs> it's been very nice. Well, I do thank you all for coming and listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon or evening or morning, wherever you are at the moment. <laughs> thank you very much. That's about it. Thank you very much, Shannon. You're welcome.